Okay, so another day, another operating system on the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and this one is a nice looking one actually. This, uh, this is Ubuntu Kylin. And uh, thanks very much to Rene Pape, or Pape, uh, on the, my YouTube comments, who pointed out to me and gave me a link for it. Uh, I'm always pleased to see different operating systems on the Pi. So let's just log in. The username is Kylin, the password is Kylin, and that will get you into the system. Uh, now, I had some trouble updating this initially, uh, and that's because the image, when you write it, and I wrote it with the Raspberry Pi imager, uh, it didn't expand to the size of the SD card. It came out as like a 16 gig image, and it had very little space. So trying to do the updates, it wouldn't let me do it. So I put it into uh, Raspbian and used Gparted, and I've got a video on how to use Gparted to expand an image to make it use the whole of your SD card. You can see the desktop starts up a little bit slow. Uh, I'm overclocked to 2147. Uh, so quite fast on the overclock, and uh, but you can see that you know the the menu system it almost moves too fast. I don't know if there's a way of slowing that down so you could go individually, but it really whips up and down. Uh, you can also I really like this. You can expand it, uh, and then that gives you all the apps, and you also have uh, categories that show up. In fact, they're not there at the moment. Why is there no categories? So if I click on, maybe I click on search. No, I'm sure I had categories here earlier on, um, and uh, it was things like office and settings or something like that, and it would it would change as to what was here. Maybe that comes up in a different mode. But you can see that that looks very nice. If you were doing a search, so say I was searching for terminal, I could start typing, and it would come up. Uh, it's a Chinese operating system, and it's their version of Ubuntu, and you do see some Chinese characters every now and then. And I found an old story. Uh, on OMG Ubuntu, uh, which is from 2017, and it says, meet the new Linux desktop environment inspired by Windows 7. And it says, it's not often that a brand new desktop environment can slip out under the radar, but that's exactly what UK UI has done. UK UI is developed by Ubuntu Kylin, the official Chinese language spin-off of Ubuntu. It aims to provide a simpler and more enjoyable experience for browsing, searching, and managing your computer. And I do like it. It, it is very nice looking. So let's minimize that. Show you down the bottom right here, usual, usual state of affairs. So that's the keyboard. Then we've got volume. We've got our Wi-Fi networks. Very nice looking. Uh, all the fonts and all the all the color schemes and everything. Really nice looking. So that calendar's nice as well. Uh, and I like this. So this is a dark mode. So if I was to open up a couple of things, and it's noticeable on folders, and it's also noticeable on terminal. It does seem a bit slow as it, compared to, uh, I mean, using 64-bit Raspbian uh, a lot. I do find it's not altogether that fast. I've definitely clicked on the folders before. Oh, there we go. I'm running from an SD card uh, on this operating system. So if I hit dark mode. You can see that terminal goes dark and also the folders go dark. Uh, it doesn't seem to do anything to uh, this side. That still keeps this very sort of transparent background, which is very nice looking. Uh, so let's close those two down. Actually, I'll put it back into light mode, leave it in the, the standard mode that it comes in. And let's go back into folders. I always do this. I always check about my NAS drive, and I couldn't find an easy way of adding it. And I, when I say easy, I mean a way that it's literally just either there on the side, or you have a drop down thing that gets you straight to it. And there isn't one on that. Obviously, you can add it, it's not a problem. You can also use different file managers. So it's again, it's not a problem. It's just one of the things I always look for uh, in an operating system. Let's just close that down. And if I go and, ha and show you what's in here. So the office suite is WPS. So you can see there's a PDF presentation spreadsheet and a writer. So if I click on that, I think that's the whole program. So that shows everything that's on there. Again, I don't think it's that it's that quick. It's based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, and I use Ubuntu quite a lot actually, um, and Ubuntu Budgie and Lubuntu, and play around with that. And I, I definitely think this isn't quite as fast, and I can't quite work out why that would be. I'm on a, um, a Samsung SD card, and I guess I'm I'm used to using an SSD a lot, so maybe that's the reason it seems a bit slower to me. So you can see here, uh, 
So if I want to go for new document, and then if I start typing, and then I can, oh, and click on the headers, you can see that all that works nicely. Uh, you can see that it has a spell check on there and it tries to tries to change that. But uh, so that that works nicely, and it's nice that it's all installed in there. So let's not save any of that. I do like as well. Uh, and if I just click on a few of these things, uh, let's go for system monitor as well. So when you've got things running down the bottom right, just like Windows 10, you can get rid of and bring back all the docs. I like the way that uh, I think Windows and Mac do it, where they put they space them out. I would rather the operating system was spaced out so you could see what apps were open, but it's nice to be able to just go back to that desktop and get that crucial file that's on the desktop. So if I click on computer, uh, here we go. Oh, take it back about the network. There is my network drive, WD My Cloud. So if I click on that, what happens? So I haven't got a password on that drive. Is it going to find it? It's probably spinning it up. Yeah, there's four folders on there, or four partitions. Looks like it's finding it. It's not not labelled it though. So this is usually my public one. Ooh. Oh, that says Time Machine. Why is it not got any? I don't know why it's not got any digits on it. Okay, well let's not spend any time sort of messing about with that. There is no web browser on it, from what I can see. Uh, so going through all of this, I couldn't see a web browser at all. Uh, so I thought I'd try and install uh, maybe Chromium, because also there doesn't seem to be an app store, and it looks like there should be an app store. So if I go to Kylin Assistant, I do like a lot of the presentation. I do I do like the, the look of the operating system. Well, you see I've got several things, and I can hover over that, and they show up nicely. Oh, and they let me close it down. Yeah, see, that's nicely implemented. There's a cleanup option, which I haven't seen much on uh, Ubuntu systems, or I haven't, I haven't seen it sort of front and center. System info, uh, so we can see here, if I click on one of these shows up, you can see it's not, not showing up for whatever reason. But if I click on CPU, I think something shows up after a short while. It's weird. Ah, oh, there you go. So the desktop one shows up. A lot of these don't show up at all, and, and no matter how long you wait, it doesn't seem to. So you can see I'm on my 8GB Pi, uh, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, uh, desktop environment, UK UI, user, Kylin. And again, if I go to, say, for instance, memory, nothing really happens. So let's go to toolkits, and you can see I've got Shred Manager for shredding files. System monitor, as it says, and then Kylin Software Center. If I click on that, no software center was found. I think it's weird that there's lots of uh, the, the UK. I mean, I, I guess it Ubuntu Kylin is why they're doing it, but obviously, I being from the UK, I just keep thinking that it's a, a UK centric uh, operating system. So, no software center and no web browser, but obviously, it's Ubuntu, so you could install. Uh, an app center on there. I'm trying to think of the one that comes with standard in Ubuntu. Shouldn't be any reason why you couldn't uh, also switch between Ubuntu and Ubuntu and Ubuntu Budgie and things like that. So I might have a look at trying to switch between those systems. But um, let's just try and see what happens if I try and install uh, Chromium. I think it's Chromium dash desktop is the command. And then you pop in your password. Is it going to find it? Unable to locate. So maybe it's just Chromium. Oh, the following packages replace it. It has been obsoleted or it's available for. What's Chromium BSU? Let's have a look at that. That sounds uh, BSU. Oh, yeah, that. BSU. I wonder what it's going to find. The installation looks like it's happening pretty quick. Although it looked like it was only about seven megabytes in it. How can it be only seven megabytes? So is it going to be there already? Yeah, Chromium. Okay, nice. What is that? It's a game. 
it's not Chromium web browser. New game. What is the game? Oh yeah. Well, maybe better. You got to pick up the skulls, I reckon. Oh. So I wonder what the Chromium command is. So anyway, let's quit out of that. But that's nice. I haven't got um, I haven't got my speaker plugged in, so you might you might have had sound with that. So that was all right. Um, a little surprise to to get something that that wasn't Chromium. Uh, so let's go for. Why has it got the same logo as well? That is weird. Firefox. That's more like it. 189 megabytes. At least once I've got a web browser, I can see what other things I can install. Okay, so that. Uh, that looks like it's installed. There it is. Let's give this a bit of a test. Okay, so Hot UK Deals. Yeah, that seems to come up nicely. Oh, it's gone a bit slow. And let's do a quick YouTube search as well and have a quick look at our video. Something I can play. Driving a car made of ice looks nice. Looks to be playing reasonably. Let's get a full screen. Oh, it's a low res advert, isn't it? Right, so let's skip that. And why well, that wasn't that doesn't look like one four four, does it? Oh, it does now. <laughs> right, so ten eighty sixty. What does it look like? Is it smooth? Well, it looks crisp, but it's certainly not smooth on movement. So not so great on that. Anyway, that was my first look at Ubuntu Kylin. I do like the look of it. If I right click on the desktop, I did notice that there is a performance mode in there and it's kind of all sort of hidden away within the theme and these themes look nice. And if you click on it, I don't know quite what it does because this is still transparent, um, but, uh, but maybe that will improve the performance. Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.